Good day, everyone. Welcome to our live stream today. I'm Irene from Infection Control Department again. <coughs> Are you complete? Where's the others? Welcome to our housekeeping staff orientation. While we are waiting for the others, I would like to tell you regarding our lecture room protocol. First, quiet please. Are you listening? Yeah. Number one, wear a mask. Yeah. Two, social distancing. Yeah. Just tell this to your other seat mate there. Anyway, you are in social distancing. Sway up, please. Now we will start first on the our video presentation. Mm. I will show you the regarding patient room disinfection. The comial infections rank among professionals. Vetco resources and process management. In actuality, it just means uh, Mr. Shine, more resistant disease causing microorganisms quiet. are evolving. One major area for concern is healthcare facilities. Hospital acquired infections. Socomial infections rank among the 10 most frequent causes of death in the United States. Interest in disinfectant efficacy Quiet, has increased we are starting in response now. to the growing numbers of nosocomial infections, as well as to the number of immune deficient patients who are susceptible to infections. Proper disinfection is extremely important to limit and control the growth of microorganisms and the spread of infection. Your job is critical in controlling the spread of harmful organisms and in turn creating a healthier environment which may even save someone's life. This training module, which is one in the Vetco Resource and Process Management or RPM Library Series, focuses on procedures and recommendations for proper disinfection of a patient room in a hospital or long-term care facility. This module will cover types of disinfectants, safety precautions, preparation, patient room daily clean occupied, patient room daily clean occupied isolation, patient room detail clean discharge, patient rooms project cleaning, and cleanup procedures. Betco has over 300 specialty cleaning products and a full line of equipment and accessories. We recommend the following Betco cleaning system to assist in disinfecting areas for patient rooms. Quatstat, broad spectrum disinfectant, excellent for meeting the requirements of the OSHA bloodborne pathogen standard. Deep blue or clear image glass and surface cleaner. Glybet disinfectant spray. Winning Hands Premium Antibacterial Hand Cleaner, PH7 All-Purpose Neutral Cleaner for vents, light fixtures, and porous surfaces. A disinfectant is an agent that destroys or inhibits the growth of disease-causing microorganisms. Most hospitals require disinfectants that are specifically tested and effective for killing certain harmful bacteria. It is important to understand the different types of disinfectants that are available. The most popular types of surface disinfectants are synthetic phenols, quaternary ammonium products, commonly referred to as quats, 
chlorine, also called bleach, iodine, and alcohol. Disinfecting reduces the risk of cross-contamination. Most germs must hitchhike to get around. And since we touch so many surfaces throughout the day, the likelihood that we will pick up germs is virtually guaranteed. Be aware that a microorganism can hitchhike in various ways skin to skin on materials such as laundry or sponges, droplets from coughing and sneezing, airborne dust particles, food and water, as well as insects or animals are all ways infectious microorganisms can be transmitted. Before beginning with any cleaning task, be sure that you fully understand how to use the chemicals and equipment required for the job. It is mandated by OSHA that every employee has a right to know about the possible chemical hazards within their workplace. A material safety data sheet, commonly called an MSDS, will provide information regarding the chemicals within your building. Read and understand the MSDS, as well as the product label for every product that you use. Your supervisor will show you where to find your MSDS information and will also help you to read and understand each sheet. Be careful not to use cleaning chemicals on any surface for which they are not intended. Be especially cautious when using acid cleaners. Never mix chemicals. It could cause serious or even fatal injury. Practice universal precautions when cleaning any blood or body fluid spills or soiled materials that could contain these or other potentially infectious substances. Refer to OSHA's Bloodborne Pathogen Standards for more information. BEDCO provides a bloodborne pathogen training module within the RPM training library series. Accidents will be limited when the proper caution signs are posted prior to cleaning, such as wet floor signs. Always wear the proper personal protective equipment or PPE to protect yourself from exposure to cleaning chemicals. Gloves and a mask or goggles will prevent chemical splashes from coming into contact with your skin and eyes. In hospitals, direct contact is the most common mode of transmission. One of the best ways to reduce cross-contamination, besides proper disinfection, is frequent hand washing. The physical action of hand washing will greatly reduce the number of bacteria on the skin and reduce the chances of cross-contamination. The less contamination, the healthier the environment. Review your supply checklist and gather the proper cleaning equipment, such as gloves and goggles, paper supplies, properly labeled cleaners, a high dusting tool, dry mop with handle, dust pan and brush, mop and bucket with wringer, caution signs, and any other applicable supplies. Be sure that the correct dilution rates are used according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Betco chemical management systems ensure that dilution rates are correct and makes your job faster and easier. Always prepare disinfectant solutions fresh daily in order to ensure their effectiveness. When cleaning an occupied patient room, never push your cleaning cart into the room. Take only the supplies and equipment needed for the task. Always knock and greet the patient and his or her visitors in a friendly manner and identify yourself, explaining why you're there. It's important to excuse yourself if a doctor, nurse, minister, or other clinical person is in the process of any type of procedure or discussion. Explain that you will come back at a more convenient time. Remember these three simple rules for cleaning. Clean from top to bottom, bringing soil to the lowest level as you go about your routine. Perform dry procedures before wet procedures, such as waste removal and paper refilling before wiping and mopping. When wiping, clean in a consistent pattern, such as up and down, then back and forth, to ensure that you cover an entire surface. Be sure to overlap your strokes. Take your seat. First, empty the trash and bring the filled liner to your cart for disposal. Never compress the trash in case there are hidden sharks or contaminated material. Room in a
Your job is critical in controlling the spread of harmful organisms and in turn creating a healthier environment which may even save someone's life. This training module, which is one in the BETCO Resource and Process Management, or RPM, library series, focuses on procedures and recommendations for proper disinfection of a patient room in a hospital or long-term care facility. This module will cover types of disinfectants, safety precautions, preparation, patient room daily clean occupied, patient room daily clean occupied isolation, patient room detail clean discharge, patient rooms project cleaning, and cleanup procedures. Betco has over 300 specialty cleaning products and a full line of equipment and accessories. We recommend the following Betco cleaning system to assist in disinfecting areas for patient rooms. Quadstat, broad spectrum disinfectant, excellent for meeting the requirements of the OSHA bloodborne pathogen standard. Deep blue or clear image glass and surface cleaner. Glybet disinfectant spray. Winning Hands Premium Antibacterial Hand Cleaner, PH7 All-Purpose Neutral Cleaner for vents, light fixtures, and porous surfaces. A disinfectant is an agent that destroys or inhibits the growth of disease-causing microorganisms. Most hospitals require disinfectants that are specifically tested and effective for killing certain harmful bacteria. It is important to understand the different types of disinfectants that are available. The most popular types of surface disinfectants are synthetic phenols, quaternary ammonium products, commonly referred to as quats, chlorine, also called bleach, iodine, and alcohol. Disinfecting reduces the risk of cross-contamination. Most germs must hitchhike to get around, and since we touch so many surfaces throughout the day, the likelihood that we will pick up germs is virtually guaranteed. Be aware that a microorganism can hitchhike in various ways. Skin to skin, on materials such as laundry or sponges. Droplets from coughing and sneezing. Airborne dust particles, food and water, as well as insects or animals are all ways infectious microorganisms can be transmitted. Before beginning with any cleaning task, be sure that you fully understand how to use the chemicals and equipment required for the job. I will job. check your attendance. It is mandated by OSHA that um, every yeah. employee yeah. has a right to know about the possible chemical hazards within Tonight. their workplace. A material safety data sheet, commonly called an MSDS, will provide information regarding the chemicals within your building. Read and understand the MSDS, as well as the product label for every product that you use. Your supervisor will show you where to find your MSDS information, and will also help you to read and understand each sheet. Be careful not to use cleaning chemicals on any surface for which they are not intended. Be especially cautious when using acid cleaners. Never mix chemicals. It could cause serious or even fatal injury. Practice universal precautions when cleaning any blood or body fluid spills or soiled materials that could contain these or other potentially infectious substances. Refer to OSHA's bloodborne pathogen standards for more information. BETCO provides a bloodborne pathogen training module within the RPM training library series. Accidents will be limited when the proper caution signs are posted prior to cleaning, such as wet floor signs. I'm Always icing. wear the proper personal protective equipment or PPE to protect yourself from exposure to cleaning chemicals. Gloves and a mask or goggles will prevent chemical splashes from coming into contact with your skin and eyes. In hospitals, direct contact is the most common mode of transmission. One of the best ways to reduce cross contamination, besides proper disinfection, is frequent hand washing. I see this. The so physical I was action of hand washing uh, will greatly reduce the number of bacteria on the skin yeah. and reduce the chances of cross contamination. The less contamination, the healthier the environment. Review your supply checklist and gather the proper cleaning equipment, such as gloves and goggles, paper supplies, properly labeled cleaners, 
a high dusting tool, dry mop with handle, dust pan and brush, mop and bucket with ringer, caution signs, and any other applicable supplies. Be sure that the correct dilution rates are used according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Vetco chemical management systems ensure that dilution rates are correct and makes your job faster and easier. Always prepare disinfectant solutions fresh daily in order to ensure their effectiveness. When cleaning an occupied patient room, never push your cleaning cart into the room. Take only the supplies and equipment needed for the task. Always knock and greet the patient and his or her visitors in a friendly manner and identify yourself explaining why you're there. It's important to excuse yourself if a doctor, nurse, minister, or other clinical person is in the process of any type of procedure or discussion. Explain that you will come back at a more convenient time. Remember these three simple rules for cleaning. Clean from top to bottom, bringing soil to the lowest level as you go about your routine. Perform dry procedures before wet procedures, such as waste removal and paper refilling before wiping and mopping. When wiping, clean in a consistent pattern, such as up and down, then back and Okay, I will start first our lecture today for your housekeeping stop orientation. Quiet, please. I see some... Talking, talking there. Our topic will be your, of course, who is uh, new stuff? New stuff? New, new, Jadid. Cool, oh. Okay, okay, okay come on. Yeah. Our topic for today for for you is proper hand hygiene. Okay, uh, proper proper use of PPE, aseptic technique, waste management disposal. The one uh, you show in the video, okay, the sharp disposal, linen management, blood body fluids policy, and isolation precaution. In our uh, housekeeping, in healthcare facility in whom the infection was not present. And there is the chain of infection. Don't take picture. Hello. But then I had a record for this. I will give you if you did the... If you did some record, I will give you, but don't picture. Okay, okay mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, chain of infections, infectious agent. There is one, two, three, four, five, six. And then reservoir, the portal of exit, the, mo the mode of transmission, the portal of entry, and the susceptible host. By the way, be attentive. One of you that uh, the topic that I will mention here, you will perform here in front of me. Our return uh, demonstration regarding hand hygiene, PPE, blood body fluid still kit. And we have two days: one for the day session and the next day. <coughs> Standard precaution: you are our of this precaution, your hand hygiene, your PPE, a septic technique, reprocessing of the instrument, your most concerned, environmental cleaning, and your waste disposal. What's the role of the housekeeper in environmental cleaning? Personal is critical to the control and prevention of infections in the hospital. It is what it is a team effort. Which all hospital workers play a part, doctors, your nurses, the bedside, the pharmacies, 
surgery technicians, especially in the operating rooms. And what is the meaning of cleaning? This is the removal of all foreign material from objects by using water and detergents, soaps, enzymes, and the mechanical action of washing or scrubbing the object. The object. Sorry. What is the disinfectant we use now that company give to us? Answer me. What? The disinfectant that we use now that give oh, us the... Uh, okay, very good. How is the dilution? And then? Mix. Mm -hmm. uh, you give you, um, put, uh, one, one kiss, five liter water. After mix, uh, after mix, okay. put in? The spray available of the container. After clean, after spray five minutes after clean. Very good, Mr. Shahin, supervisor. Okay, disinfection describes the process that eliminates many or all pathogenic microorganisms except bacterial spores or inanimate. What is inanimate? That's non-living objects. In healthcare settings. Objects usually are disinfected by liquid chemicals and chemicals called what disinfectants. And then we have healthcare waste. The yellow waste. Mm -hmm. What's inside the yellow waste? Yellow waste. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yellow plastic. Yellow plastic. And then what you will put? Put, uh, what you will remove? What's inside? Medical waste. Medical waste. Medical waste. Medical waste. Good. How about in the red plastic? Hmm? With biohazard sign. Red plastic? The red plastic with biohazard sign. You what do you... Water. Red plastic. Placenta. Very good. Placenta. Yeah. It's number one example. Not, not uh, red plastic. No. Now finish the plastic. Okay, okay. Okay, your daily duties. Clean the floor, clean hand beds and tops and mirrors. Empty, wash and relying waste bins, sorry. Replenish and hand tissues. Toilet roll and soap. Dump dust bed and locker areas. Dump dust headboard side rails and under surfaces of the beds, including wheels assembles, spot cleaning walls and doors, wash and dry door handles, clean tile walls. And this is your, what you need there? Your checklist. What's inside your checklist? What uh, you have in your checklist? The one I do for you, the checklist. Cleaning checklist. Yes, what's, uh, what's the dip? Okay, what's the difference of the daily room cleaning and terminal cleaning? Who will answer terminal that? Terminal cleaning. Okay. First, uh, terminal cleaning is uh, isolation group. Another answer. You, Junaid, what's the. What is terminal cleaning for you? Fast food, uh, house, room outside, you will uh, stand. Yeah. Yeah. This is your checklist, the daily room and terminal cleaning. Okay? The daily room means you are cleaning every day, as daily with, with, with patient. Okay. You ask me terminal cleaning, right? Yeah. Okay, to you, Mr. Junaid, what is terminal cleaning? How do you do your, how do you do, okay, how do you do your terminal cleaning? After recharge, okay. clean. Okay. First I put you look at outside room. Mm. Then I number two take clean. Okay. Okay. Number three you was. Okay. Uh, number four. Mm. All you are here in Bangladesh. 
Ayo aku nak nak kerana nak lagi. Ayo. No, they request you. How do you do, you do your terminal cleaning? Asma, I request you open asma. Pintu, 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 pintu. Yes, pintu. Sibia, asma. Pintu, 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 pintu. Sibia, sibia. Ah, how do you clean your asma, your CPR? I did. You, you, you. No, I. Mr. Junaid, I'm talking to Ms. Hana. Hasna, ha? Okay. Okay, ha? Okay. Just, uh, okay, okay. Listen to me. Okay, your terminal cleaning, you will uh, clean the room if the patient already discharged. Yes. Huh? Yeah, yeah. After discharge, you will clean from high touch room sur uh, surfaces and you will evaluate the priority sites for each patient room huh uh, <laughs> yeah and then following additional site these equipments are present in the room in the, your room this is just a checklist i give to you i know you uh, you are familiar with this but i will not mm, uh, tell you one it's it, you just uh, check again in your checklist it was there oh, and, and if i discuss this we will be run more than 24 hours okay quiet please evaluate the following additional sites of this equipment like the high touch room surfaces huh? and then you will mark the monitoring method I did. this is boy, boy no understand you you can please speak Okay. 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 This check this is English. You in the alum? Okay. Okay, class. Quiet please. I'm talking, huh? Okay, the daily the daily room. You have this. And what's in uh, the most important here? Your what detergent you are using. Okay? And then you just uh you just inform me if the changes of the disinfectant if you don't have uh, available stocks that's it okay next the weekly duties you will clean lip floors and each sides more frequently high cleaning in corridor areas including picture frames high edges and curtain rails Machine scrub and dry all ceramic tiles area. Manually scrub and repolish stairways. High cleaning of patient areas in bathrooms. Clean all upholstered and vinyl furniture. In the words, in the offices. The scale curtains when soiled. Now, this is it your hand washing technique and hand hand rub okay how many sec how many seconds your hand washing 40 60 30. hand rub okay for the quick uh, can you come here mr uh Shahin? no no nothing Come. Do your hand hygiene. Hand wrap. This is only hand wrap. Wait. Why? It need talata arba pamsa sita sabba tamanya. Alright. Why? Okay. After. One. Check. 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 One. Okay, again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very good, Mr. Shahin, the supervisor. Perfect. You, you, come here. Yeah, 
No, you forget. Yes. How can you forget? You have many visual poster. This is your poster. The poster is in. I want. I I have one question. I am not understand terminal cleaning. Okay, you pass this terminal cleaning. This all understand. All cleaner this understand. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, now no, no. No. No, my partner what? No. You taste no. No. Can you come? No. No. Can you come please here? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> but then no, but then it's okay. Huh? Okay, your personal protective equipment. This is to prevent occupational diseases and injuries that may be avoided through the use of appropriate protective equipment. Number one, what do you do? Perform hand hygiene. Second, put on the gown. And then put on the N95 uh, or regular mask. Depends. If you are in the isolation, what you will use? Yes, yes. N95. Okay. And then put on eye protection and then put on gloves. This is putting on means don't need. Okay. For your personal protective equipment. And then removing is your, they said, doping. Number one, of course, remove the gloves and then remove the gown and then perform hand hygiene and then remove eye protection and then remove the mask or I-95 if you are wearing N95 and then perform hand hygiene. Okay, but then we will do, but mm, not now because I need to, I, wait, I will finish this portion because you are, okay, the gown is like this. Fully covered torso from the neck to knees, arm to end of wrist, and wrap around the back, fasten it back of neck and waist. If gown is too small or used to go. Your mask, secure ties or elastic band at the middle of the head of the neck. And then you must fit fit flexible band to nose bridge. Fit snug to face and below the chin. Okay. Regarding to your uh, mask, your mask always, well, you will wear your mask, you cover the nose and then under the chin. Like you, Apu, your mask is only wearing the uh, no, mouth. You must put on, uh, included your, no, yeah, no, no, not you, the other one. Yes. Yeah, very good. That's it, like that. So you, very good. All of you are wearing masks. This is our protocol now. Yes. And then gloves. Don't gloves last. And select your according to your size. And then cleaning procedures. All equipment equipment for cleaning and housekeeping must be clean and dry before starting to work. Dry mopping. Mop floors with elastic elastic cloth. Discarded after cleaning. Then, uh, and your uh, wet mopping. Mop with hot water, temperature not to exceed 50 degrees Celsius. Discard dirt cleaning solutions from the bucket every after each five bedded room. Use double bucket system for floor mopping solutions. One for cleaning solution and one for rinsing. There should be separate cleaning materials for the wards and separate cleaning materials for the toilets and bathrooms. And we have color-coded this. Who knows the color-coded of our map? What we use color-coded in the hallway? Yes. 
color color Okay, pintu. Again, again, again. Blue. Okay, blue, blue. Uh, we, the map that we use in the hallway is color blue. Yeah, thank you. Pinto. Okay, Pal palace floors are necessary. No cleaning procedures during cold blue. Remember, remember. Take note. You listen. Listen just a minute, please. No cleaning procedures during code blue dressing and morning care procedures. Okay? If you, there is patient inside and they are doing the morning procedures by nurses, you will not allow to come. Um, just wait after. Okay? And if there is during code blue in the ER, you will come? No, because everybody's busy and you will be, you will get your disposal there the waste no no spills of blood shall be reported immediately to the nurse for proper management and supervision the high risk patient areas 24 hours maximum continuous care. careful cleaning is required in the following your or recovery room nico icu er long-term care who is absent from here I see you all complete. No, what I who absent today? No. I see you, Mr. No. Okay. Absent, absent. Yeah, this is our transmission based precaution. Okay. Airborne dropped precautions and contact precaution. Now this is our. You know this already, sir. They will ask you this during survey. Especially on the who is now in the isolation duty. If we have a case in isolation, you? Yes. Well, Ogenic, yes. You know this. This is our, if the patient is uh, under contact precaution, this is our protocol. What's the color of contact? Yeah. And then the airborne. Who oh, answer red? red. Okay, I'm 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 talking to the uh, airborne ocean. So the, be attentive, be attentive, and uh, this is airborne precautions. Blue. Next is your. Red droplet, very good droplet. That's the color red. Red. Uh, your blood body fluid exposure. Uh, exposure. This uh blood. This is your. This is the last time we use it. Huh? Now and I asked this to our CEO to because only now few stops. Now we will uh. Uh, biohazard spill box. That's one. Who use who? Who knows to use this? Denied. Okay. okay. Number one, always wear the. I, I will tell you the instruction here. Always wear gloves with apron. Number two, pour all runners over spill and then leave for what? How many minutes? Two. Two, two minutes. Okay. Two. And then add four. Number three, add four small tablets. In the empty granules on the container and carefully fill with water on the lines. And then set aside for two minutes to allow the tablets to dissolve. And then peel number four, peel backing strip away from yellow disposal bag and stick bag tool or cable. Allow to hang open retain, uh, retain backing strip to act as a type. Then collect spill in granules mixture using. The spoon and the spray. Then discard all into the yellow disposal box. When tablets have dissolved, screw down gap in the mix solution gently by inversion. And then use solution with paper towels to wipe area of the spill and any drips or splashes on the vertical surface. And the last step, 
let's uh, place all material gloves last into the disposable. Use packing strip to tie the bag and it contain should be placed into an appropriate color-coded clinical waste sack and dispose in accordance with local clinical waste policy. What uh, what is the important thing you should uh, you should remember during if you have a blood? What the first step you should do? Put a caution, the sign, the sign, huh? caution first, huh? so that everybody will be aware, because you are the one who make make this. Here, the Okay, need, needle prick injury and sharp injury. You listen, huh? Do not apply pressure to the wound. Allow, yes, allow it to prick, huh? Allow it to bleed freely. Listen me. Can I leave two minutes or two minutes? Okay, you leave. Because you've got a noise. Wash the wound with soap under running water. Then cover the wound with sterile gauze. Then report to for the emergency for medical assessment. Then inform supervisor or your IC nurse. What's that mean? Infection control nurse, your IPC link. And then identify the patient involved so that they can be evaluated for an infection. Then you will follow the direction for any necessary blood test, vaccination or medication. Then write, don't forget, huh? Don't forget, write an OBR. What's the meaning of OBR? I don't need them. And then submit over to the PI department. Occurrence variance report. Follow up serology investigation after three and six months. Any questions? No. No? Pratap is still here? Ah, okay, Mojud, huh? We will watch this and then we'll finish. Mm -hmm. Thank you. After viewing this video, you will be able to safely handle soiled linen, safely dispose of medical and non-medical waste, perform high dusting, clean high-touch surfaces, clean the operating room table, clean the ceiling and walls, clean the operating room floor, and accurately check and inspect your work. The circulator generally gives direction to enter the operating room once the case is over and the room is clear. When directed, move your cart to just outside the operating room that you will clean. Don't roll your cart into the room. Stage it just outside the door for the cleaning process. Remember, this cart and equipment is for operating room cleaning only and should not be used in any other area of the hospital. Your personal safety is of the utmost importance. Always wear the appropriate personal protective equipment, such as scrubs, shoe covers, hair covering, and a mask with eye protection. All jewelry and personal effects should be left in your locker. Remember to thoroughly wash your hands and arms before entering the operating room to prevent possible shedding of skin or hair. A recommended alternative is to wear a long sleeve warm up jacket that is buttoned or snapped closed. Once you have put on a fresh set of gloves, you are ready to enter the operating room. The operating room door should remain closed while you clean the room. Begin by rolling a Rubbermaid linen hamper up to the operating room table. Fold the linen corners into the middle of the table, forming a small bundle. Lift the bundle so that it does not touch your body and place it into the linen hamper. Remember, 
treat all linen as though it could contain sharps or medical waste. After securing the top closures, pick up the used suction container from the suction carousel and place it into the kick bucket. The kick bucket should be double lined with red medical waste poly liners. Gather the inner liner, roll the outer liner down and securely double tie it before removing the liners from the kick bucket. Always carry waste away from your body. Lift the liners and take them out of the operating room to the central pickup point for medical waste. Remember, always treat every bag of waste as if it could have a sharp object in it. Reline the kick bucket with two red medical liners. We recommend a Rubbermaid Lobby Pro dustpan and cleaning wand to gather and pick up any large debris on the floor. The squeegee wand is preferred over a traditional broom in an operating room for several reasons. It does not cause any small particles to become airborne. It is easier to clean and disinfect than a traditional broom. And it can gather and pick up both wet and dry waste. Once all of the debris is collected into the dustpan, it is easily dumped into a Rubbermaid step-on container that has been lined with the red medical waste bag. Now it is time to gather all other waste from the operating room. Start by picking up any trash around the waste containers. After all the trash has been picked up, roll the poly liner closed and double tie the top for disposal. Remember, never compress the waste materials down into the container with your hands. A sharp item could be in the waste container. Always treat all waste as if it contains sharps. Handle waste for the least amount of time possible and carry the bags away from your body. After emptying a waste container, reline it with the correct size and color poly liner as directed by your supervisor. Secure the liner in place by tying a knot in one of the corners. Don't mix general poly bagged waste, which is identified by a see-through or translucent liner, with red bagged medical waste. These two types of waste are handled by your facility in different ways at very different disposal costs. We recommend the Rubbermaid Hygiene Flexible Dusting Wand, a high-performance dusting sleeve, and an adjustable length handle for high dusting. Start by attaching the flexible wand to the adjustable length handle. Bend the flexible wand to the desired shape and extend the handle to the desired height. Start by cleaning the boom arm for the light and any other equipment suspended from the ceiling. Always start at the highest point and work your way down. While dusting at the ceiling level, clean all fixtures and hoses that would normally be out of reach. Hoses are frequently missed, and due to their flexible nature, they can shed dust and lint simply by being touched or moved during a surgery. Finally, bend the flexible wand to help dust across the top of all cabinets and shelves. For high-touch areas, we recommend the green Rubbermaid Hygiene Microfiber Cloth. Bring the green 5-quart pail of microfiber cloths into the operating room. These cloths have been pre-moistened in cleaning solution. Directions for preparing the cloths can be found in the Cart Preparation chapter of this DVD. Remove a green microfiber cloth from the green pail and wring out any excess cleaning solution. Starting with the overhead arm, Reach up to the point farthest from the light and wipe down all the surfaces with the green cloth. Pivot the light fixture so that the top surface is facing you and continue the cleaning process. Be sure to turn and fold the cloth frequently for optimal cleaning results. Do not be surprised if there is blood or other bodily fluids on the light. If these fluids are present, scrub the area to thoroughly clean the surface frequently turning the cloth to a clean side. Continue to clean all the areas of the light that the surgical team may have touched. Repeat these steps on the second overhead light. 
Continue using a green Rubbermaid Hygiene Microfiber Cloth to clean the work tables and Mayo stand surfaces. Frequently turn the cloth using the eight-sided fold method. Details of the eight-fold method can be reviewed in the Rubbermaid Hygiene Product Use Manual. Thoroughly clean all surfaces of the Mayo stands and tables, including the legs and the base. Be sure to turn the cloth frequently. One area frequently missed is the underside of the tables and stands, as well as their legs. Use smooth side-to-side -side wiping motions for complete surface coverage. Never place a used microfiber cloth back into a pail, as this could be a source of cross-contamination. When finished with the cloth, place it in the linen bag for laundering. We recommend the light blue Rubbermaid Hygiene Glass Cloth for any glass, mirrored or highly reflective surfaces that may need to be cleaned. This cloth can be used damp or dry for exceptional streak-free cleaning. We recommend a red Rubbermaid Hygiene Microfiber Cloth to clean the operating table. Remove one red cloth from the red pail. Wring it out and use the eight-side fold method to maximize cloth usage. To effectively clean the operating table, you will need to disassemble and move its attachments to thoroughly inspect and clean all of its surfaces. Start by inspecting and wiping the top, sides, and bottom of the table pads. Be careful not to stack a cleaned pad on a surface that has not been cleaned. Next, wipe down the top and bottom of each removable component as you lift it from the base. Always wipe the area of the bed beneath the removable platforms before you reinstall them. With some practice, this process becomes second nature. Remember, frequently turn the cloth during the cleaning process. After cleaning the surface of the operating table, work your way down to the table's base. Thoroughly wipe the underneath side of the table. Continue down the base of the table, remembering to clean the legs and casters. When you are finished with the operating table, put the red microfiber cloth in your laundry bag and return the pails to the cleaning cart. We recommend the Rubbermaid Hygiene 18 inch wet mop, 18 inch frame, an adjustable length handle, and the charging bucket for wall and ceiling cleaning. The yellow charging bucket contains microfiber damp mops that have been pre moistened with the supervisor approved cleaning solution. Complete directions for preparing the wet mops in the charging bucket can be found in the cart preparation chapter of this DVD and also in the printed product use manual. Open the lid of the bucket and press the 18-inch frame down onto the top microfiber pad to secure it to the frame via a hook and loop attachment. Extend the handle so that you can easily reach the ceiling. Clean the ceiling by pulling the mop from one end of the room to the other using straight strokes. Be careful not to snag any fixtures or sprinkler heads. Each mop should cover approximately 250 square feet. To remove the mop when it is dry or when the task is complete, step on the edge of the mop with one foot and the edge of the frame with your other foot while lifting. Place the used mop in the linen bag for laundering. Rubbermaid hygiene damp mops and cloths are bleach safe which is helpful when cleaning after a case where a patient may have had C. diff or another pathogen illness requiring chlorine bleach to disinfect. To clean the walls, pick up a new damp mop from the charging bucket and start at the ceiling. Clean in a top to bottom pattern with smooth vertical strokes, always keeping the mop in contact with the wall. Next, clean the lower half of the wall using long horizontal strokes in a side-to-side -side pattern, keeping the mop in contact with the wall at all times. Never let the mop come in contact with the floor. Shortening the length of the handle may provide better control. 
The final step is to mop across the baseboard. When finished, place the wet mop in the linen bag for laundering. To terminally clean the operating room floor, the first step is to move all of the furnishings and equipment to one side of the room. Remember that all furnishings have a start point and must be returned to this point once the floor is dry. Speak with your supervisor regarding a floor plan you should follow. Use a floor scrubber on the open half of the floor, following the manufacturer's directions. Then move the furnishings and equipment to the other side of the room, rolling the casters through the floor cleaning solution, and use the floor scrubber to clean the other half of the floor. When the floor is dry, move all furnishings and equipment back to their starting point. Take a final look at the room to check for any spots that you may have missed. As you look back over the room, review your cleaning process checklist to ensure that you have not missed a step. A green Rubbermaid hygiene cloth is perfect for last-minute touch-ups on frequently touched items like the phone, light switch, wall-mounted panels, and door handles. Remember, never place a used cloth back into a pail due to the risk of cross-contamination. Always place used cloths in the linen bag for laundering. Properly remove and dispose of your personal protective equipment. Let the circulator know you have completed the terminal cleaning of the operating room. Before moving to the next operating room, be sure to thoroughly wash your hands. Hand washing is one of the most important things you can do to reduce the risk of cross transmission. Wet your hands thoroughly before applying soap. Lather your hands, wrists, and fingers with soap for at least 20 seconds. Rinse all surfaces of your wrists, hands, and fingers. Finish by drying your hands and wrists with a clean, dry paper towel. Dispose of the towel. Your facility may have different cleaning procedures. If you have any questions, ask your supervisor. Thank you for watching. See you on my next topic.